What's going on guys, it's Salvaje. So here are three essential Outlander tips that every Outlander player needs to know about in Fortnite Save the World. My creator code, it's Salvaje. Feel free to like the video. With that said, let's get straight into the content. So, the first key essential tips for Outlanders in Fortnite Save the World, make sure that you're maximizing your Outlanders farming capabilities. For example, when you go into a defensive mission, make sure that your number one objective is to look for loot llamas. Open up those loot llamas, which loot llamas can be available for up to 10 minutes, but just in case you guys didn't know. But yeah, open up those loot llamas, break those loot llamas, get the materials out of those loot llamas, and then make sure that you put in those materials that you got from those llamas into the objective. At the end game levels of play and the intermediate levels of play, the more materials you put into your objective, the more planning that goes into your objective, the higher your chances of actually winning the mission and the lesser your chance of being overwhelmed by your enemies, which are going to be of course the husk. So you want to make sure that as an outlander, you're doing your job when it comes down to gathering resources. Use your anti-materials charge also to break cars so that you can get some nuts and bolts and you can help your team, of course, craft a couple of traps that might be needed for the defense. This tip mostly applies to Canny Valley and Twine Peaks levels of play because in Stonewood and Plankerton, you know, putting a lot of traps isn't really that necessary. But if there's one thing that I know about Stonewood and Plankerton, as well as Canny Valley and Twine Peaks, is that as an outlander, you always want to be opening up those loot llamas. And like I previously said, you want to be putting the materials that you got from the loot llama into the objective by building around the objective and upgrading things around the objective. So like that, the objective has a lot of health and doesn't get completely overwhelmed by husk from 0 to 100 real quick. Bottom line, you want to be getting those farming materials and you want to be investing them in the objective so that you have an easier time with the mission. So the second essential tip is to make sure that you're getting as many fragments as possible or that you're running fragment flurry jets in your commander slot or in your support slot because fragment flurry jets is a hero that is going to be regenerating charge fragments depending on how many eliminations uh, you're getting, right? So the reason why fragments are really important when it comes down to Outlander play is because they're going to be uh, making it so that your Shock Tower or your Teddy doesn't take any energy. But most importantly, they're going to be reducing the cooldown of Shock Tower as well as Teddy. And this is a really big deal because the lower the cooldowns on your Teddy and your Shock Tower, the more damage you're going to be able to provide, the more crowd control you're going to be able to do, etc, etc. So charge fragments are really, really important. And I would probably say if you're doing a four time mission, you should probably have at least five to four, like four to five charge fragments with you. And if you're doing just a regular mission, I think three charge fragments are going to be helping you out a lot, right? But of course, I do want to point out if you have fragment flurry Jess, you're definitely going to be set because if you have her on your support hero slot, She's going to be giving you one charge fragment every 39 eliminations and that means like weapon elimination, trap elimination, gadget elimination. So Fragment Flurry Jess, really really good hero and she usually comes into Fortnite Save the World during um, the holidays like the uh, you know December holidays. So definitely be on the lookout for Fragment Flurry Jess if she comes back into the game or if you have her make sure that you level her up and you put her on your hero loadout or you run her as a commander hero because she's actually a really good outlander. Anyway, last but not least, my third essential Outlander tip is to make sure that you're being very mindful about your ability usage as an Outlander. This is a tip that applies to endgame players, players that like to participate in the 100 plus level missions, war games, endurance, and also the limited time events that we have in Save the World like Challenge the Horde or Frost Knight. But long story short guys, the reason why you want to be very mindful about your ability usage is because sometimes you might need your teddy because you're about to get overwhelmed at the objective but you don't have the teddy available because every time that you have it off cooldown, you basically just throw it down because YOLO, right? Something that I found at the higher levels of play is that outlanders that aren't mindful about their ability usage can sometimes uh, actually hinder the mission success rates by a lot. For example, this outlander throws down his shock tower and his teddy every single chance that he gets and then all of a sudden a trap tunnel explodes and we need the outlander's teddy and shock tower but that player doesn't have the shock tower or the teddy because again he's not being very mindful 
about his ability usage. So make sure that you guys understand when is the right circumstance to throw down your teddy and when is the right circumstance to maybe not tr throw down your teddy and maybe use a gadget or maybe just use your weapons as well. So those are three essential tips that you guys will want to know if you want to maximize Outlanders in Fortnite Save the World. Be on the lookout for my 25 Outlander tip video. And if you're a brand new Save the World player, I absolutely recommend that you check out the Save the World Beginner's Guide playlist linked in the description below. See you guys in the next one, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.